Here's a little exercise you can use right now to enhance your creativity. What we're going to do is we're going to overcome a cognitive bias which is called functional fixedness. Cognitive biases are flaws in our thinking, errors in our thinking that cause us to think uh, incorrectly um, about certain subjects. It's kind of like a shortcut a brain takes which might be useful in some circumstances but it can end up getting us into trouble. So in this case, functional fixedness means that you think of an item you have only in terms of what that item can do. So, say I've got this book by Brian Cox. Um, functional fixedness is what's making me think of it as a book, as opposed to paper and card for the cover. So how can that prevent you from being uh, creative? Well, the uh, example that psychologists use is something called the candle experiment, or the candle box experiment, I can't remember. So basically you have a candle um, and you have a box of tacks and someone will say to you, hey, use this box of tacks and this candle and get the candle to attach to the wall so that it can burn whilst being attached to the wall like a nice little lamp. And so most people will take the candle, they'll take the tacks and they'll try tacking the candle to the wall, uh, which doesn't work because it will just break the wax and it'll make a mess. And also, unless you're Superman, you can't just push a tack into a wall through a candle. So what they're supposed to do is to take the box that the tacks are in and attach the box to the wall and then stand the candle in the box. The problem is they can't think of the box as a container or a shelf because they're actually thinking of it as a box for the tax. That's functional fixedness and it's preventing them from being as creative as they can. So how do you get around this? What you have to do is you have to take everything you've got and you think of it in terms of resources, as materials, as opposed to uh, whatever it is they're supposed to be. So in, this, in the case of the candle box experiment, you would have uh, wax, you'd have wick, you'd have, which is sort of string, you'd have uh, um, cardboard, you'd have metal, tacks, box, candle, all those things. Those are all the resources you have available to you. And if you look at things like this, you realise you have more resources, you become more resourcefulness. You overcome that cognitive bias and you can come up with more um, out there solutions to your problems. Uh, next time someone gives you a tongue twister, try using this exercise and you might find that you're able to come up not a tongue twister, a riddle, and you might find you're able to come up with the solution. Um, so that's functional fitness. That's one example um, of the way our brain can sometimes prevent us from thinking creativi creatively. So what is creativity? Creativity is the ability to lean back and to allow yourself to explore the interconnected ideas um, through the web of your connected neurons. So everyone in their brain has got billions of connections, lots of little brain cells, neurons, all connected by little tendrils um, and they have these gaps which they communicate between called synapses. This big web would look like a massive mind map if you were to somehow draw it down and it's called your connectome. Your connectome stores all your ideas, all your beliefs, your opinions, your memories and it's what makes you who you are to a large extent. So when you're creative you lean back and you let your brain explore, kind of bleed outwards and look at all these different interconnected ideas and find novel connections and correlations between things that perhaps wouldn't obviously be connected. So in other words, you're taking old ideas and recombining them to create new ones, as opposed to just looking at the obvious connections. So what you need to do in order to do this is relax your brain. And a lot of nootropics and a lot of um, you know, things like caffeine, they're all about focus and um, energy and being highly wired so that you don't get distracted. But actually that's not what you want if you want to be creative. If you want to be creative, you need the opposite. You need to relax, because when you're focused, when you've got lots of dopamine and norepinephrine in your brain, you're wired, your focus is on one thing that's going on in your brain at once. Well, it's not really one thing, but lots of things, but it's, it's more as though it's one thing. When you're relaxed and laid back and you're on the verge of sleep, your brain is exploring all these different ideas. In fact, as you're starting to fall asleep, you hit the hypnagogic state, which is the point where you're just before sleep, where your thoughts start to make no sense. And that's because of melatonin and GABA and things that make your brain more relaxed. That's why using marijuana or alcohol can actually increase your creativity. Not that I suggest that you use either of those um, in order to improve your creativity. I actually really don't. However, there are lots of other things you can do to make your mind more relaxed, to help yourself wander through the um, networks of your mind and come up with new ideas. One example is simply just to relax. Um, and studies have shown that having green in the room, like a plant, can actually make you more relaxed uh, and thus more creative. The reason for this is that we associate, from an evolutionary perspective, the colour green 
with uh, natural environments that are full of resources. So we enjoy them, so we feel more relaxed when we're in them. Likewise, you can feel more relaxed by going for a walk, and many studies have shown that walks are fantastic for creativity, and they increase our ideas and um, our inventiveness. Many good ideas come as well when you're not forcing them, when you're in the shower. Um, this is when you're able to activate your default mode network. The default mode network is the part of your brain that kicks in when you're not doing anything. It's when you go introverted. And again, this is my problem with people assuming that certain neurotransmitters are better than others. Um, everyone's talking about flow states and how good they are for being productive and creative, etc. But flow states are all about being engaged with your environment. That's great. But um, even Einstein would say that the reason he came up with the theory of relativity was that he was working in the patent office at the time. Actually, he came up with the special theory of relativity when he was in the patent office. Not that that's important right now. Point is, if you can distract your high order thinking with something mundane, you're able to. Uh, you, dis you distract the other part of your brain with something mundane, you're able to uh, turn inwards, start thinking about things without uh, any distractions, using your default mode network that you use to um, imagine different scenarios and explore ideas and get creative. So this is one good reason to maybe turn off YouTube or those podcasts when you're washing up the dishes and instead just let your mind wander. There's a lot of value in just letting your mind wander. I also mentioned how being on the verge of sleep um, was great for exploring different ideas in your mind because of the hypnagogic state that you go into and some creatives actually try and use this as a way to generate ideas. People like Salvador Dali, I think. I think it was him who used something uh, similar to falling asleep holding a spoon over a plate. So he'd go to sleep like that, holding his spoon over his plate and when he dropped off to sleep he'd drop the spoon, he'd land on the plate and make such noise it'd wake him up. What this meant was he would wake up just as he was in that hypnagogic state and that way he'd be able to remember all of his ideas and crazy things that he'd come up with and that's why he painted such bizarre stuff because it was all from that part of his brain uh, when it was just wand wandering through different interconnected ideas that he had stored. Of course you also can get ideas from your dreams which pretty much is just your brain randomly exploring around things forming connections that it's made during the day, but at the same time allowing you to experience completely bizarre combinations of ideas. Um, people who are fortunate enough to be able to lucid dream, they can use this as a creative process as well. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. As hard as I try, I can post it on that as something I'm interested in. There are many other things you can do to relax your brain and to encourage this sort of thinking but the point is whatever strategy you use sometimes just let your brain wander through different ideas and so there you go there's much more to it than that of course but that is the fundamentals explained when it comes to creativity and neuroscience creativity is about letting your mind relax it's about switching off those stress hormones that make you stay focused and agitated and it's about just exploring different ideas it's about the default mode network and it's about having rich environments and rich inputs to give you lots of things to recombine into new ideas. Hope you found that useful and interesting. I'd love to hear your comments on what makes you uh, get your creative juices flow and uh, stay tuned for more videos like this as well as the usual fitness training etc. Until next time, bye for now.